How you doing, my friends? Welcome to the Joe Shire Show, where we cover all things superheroes, video games, comic books, TV shows, all things geeky, here in one place. I'm Joe Shire, the man with the stash, who also stashes other stashes where I can just then take them and Velcro them on, because this isn't real. It's not. But anyways, as what we are doing today is a little bit new and a little bit old all at the same time, because we're bringing back Five Fun Facts! That's right, the interview show where you get to know five fun things about someone on the internet that you may not have known before. Uh, but I actually don't know any of the facts because I don't listen to my friends when they talk, and that's what makes me a bad friend. But who do we have today? Well, we have uh, the very talented, the very uh, uh, on the other side of the internet, because we can't be next to each other these days, Lisa Foyles! I'm here! Hi! I didn't know if if you weren't making sound or if you were so loud your limiter on your mic went off and that's, that's what, it what it was. That's what it was. Okay, but you As and I are the same. When we get up. excited, we get loud. Like yeah, we project. So yeah. if you can't hear it, that just means you know dogs are barking because they can hear us. Uh, <laughs> hi, Lisa. How are you? Hi, I'm so good. It's so good to talk to you and any human at this point. Um, right? You look great, by the way. I like the stash. You know, Thank you. Not normally uh, like a stash girl, but I think it looks I, good on you, man. And you, you've been uh, very productive this quarantine life. You've actually uh, released a book recently. Uh, tell us about yes. your book really quickly. Yes. So it's actually been six years in the making, and it's um, kind of a crazy story. Um, I, I wrote the book six years ago, and it was kind of the only aspect of entertainment where I didn't have any connections. You know, that's kind of how entertainment works, is like, you want to do a thing, you call up all your friends that have connections that know how to give you advice and how to hook you up, and then you go from there. That's like how this, you know. Man, I need new friends. They don't help me with Jack. <laughs> Well, I'll help you if you ever need. Oh, you know, thank you. I don't know. <laughs> Want to I'm, tour the Nickelodeon set? I'll hook you up. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I, I didn't know anybody in publishing or any anybody in the book world. So I'm like, how do I get a book, a book published? I was literally Googling how to write and publish a book. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm dead serious. Um, and so, I think that's just good advice. If, if there's something that you want to learn how to do and you've got a goal, just Google it. It works. First I got a publishing deal and then I didn't get a publishing deal and then like I got another one and it fell through and like it's this whole big thing. But it's finally out. I have a book out and uh, it's a middle grade fantasy novel. I call it a mix between Harry Potter and Pokemon. So if you like either of those two things, this if is If you want to make a billion you. dollars, that's how you make a billion dollars. <laughs> it's combined two of the largest IPs in the world. Yeah, so it's a, uh, you know, it kind of has the aspect of you know, it has the fantasy world, it has kids going to a special school, but at this school they're all training their own individual, like, magical creature. So every kid has their own creature and they learn how to so use much magic with the creature and they battle and it's, uh, yeah, it was, really, it was really important to me that the lead character, Ash, because it's called Ash Ridley and the Phoenix, her, her bonded mm -hmm. beast is a phoenix. And it was really important to me that Ash was not special, that she was just a normal, 12 year old girl who gets kind of swept up That's in this so very good. magical world. Yeah. Uh, and I love that aspect of the book because, like, obviously, if, if we're going to make the comparison to Harry Potter, like, Harry Potter's like, you know, the chosen one. It's another yeah. thing like that where it's like it almost takes a, a level of rela relatability away from yeah. the character. Uh, and, and I like that. And also, uh, just in case if you're like I and can't read as quickly as everyone else, you can listen to the audiobook. Uh, and what giant star did you get to actually do the reading for your audiobook? Well, they actually tried not to have me read it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we need a bigger star to do this. Um, because of the whole pandemic thing, uh, I was supposed to go to LA and record my own audiobook and, you know, that's like a dream come true. And because everything shut down, they're like, well, you know, if you can't come to LA to do it, we're just going to get one of our other narrators to do it. And I'm like, no, it's like, hold I on. have to do it, please. So thankfully, they, uh, I was able to get a big, like, at home kit. You know, it was in this studio and I had padded walls set up everywhere and a super, super nice microphone. You and sound fantastic here. So the audio oh, quality in the book is going to be good. And and we are going to put a link down in the description below so you can find out more information about the book. So if you'd like to uh, listen to it or read it, uh, you can go check out Lisa Foyle's first book. Your first Yay, book. My first book. I did it. Yay. How this works is, uh, uh, Lisa, you are going to uh, go through a list of stories, anecdotes, or facts about you that the internet may or may not know. Uh, the only rules being that they must be five and they must be fun. And I'm okay. very like liberal on those two facts. They okay, you might go to six, it might go to four, and they don't always have to be fun. Okay. Uh, I'll be completely honest, but we like to keep the title. There's so, one that's, that's more inspirational than fun, Ooh. but you can kind of be fun. I don't know. You know, I find fun in inspiration. I put the fun <laughs> in inspiration. 
you're probably thinking it's not there. It's because it's I'm really quote. not. Uh, <laughs> it needs to be on one of those like posters, like in my office here. Be just like, a little oh, cat holding fun on. An inspiration. Yeah, <laughs> it's just you. Uh, yeah, just me <laughs> holding onto a tree, which actually was a lot of my childhood. We don't need to go into those stories. Uh, all right, let's start off. Fuck, fuck that. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You have to, yeah, you gotta, you gotta punch with the right. Fight you! I will fight this computer. So let's get started with our first fun fact with Lisa Foils. All right, now we're gonna start. Uh, I like to start at number five and kind of go up to number one. Okay. So, you know, uh, so we can kind of like work up to the greatness. So what is uh, number five on your list? So number five is uh, the internet knows that I started out in entertainment as a dancer. Like that's kind of where I cut my teeth, like mm -hmm. on stage. But I don't know if the internet knows the extent of my dance past. So oh, I Oh, we're digging deep here on the show today. <laughs> So I won over 200 first place trophies in dance competitions and three national titles, which included trophies that at the time were bigger than I was. And I got three big crowns to go along with it. Like I was like, I, they brought me up on stage and they crowned me like I was royalty. That, okay, first of all, as a kid, that must have been the coolest thing. A, you win and B, you become royalty. So but the problem uh, was every dream. Every crown was too big for my head. So I had this <laughs> magical moment where I'm up there just like, Bring me my princess crown, and they would stick it on my head, and then just like, er, and I'm just up there, just like, <laughs> and you're just like tilting with it. I'm uh, like, I'm still beautiful. Oh man, another reason why I love the show is because it also gives me an opportunity to learn more about my friends and just love them and be even more proud of where they came from. That's Aww. awesome. That's really cool. Um, uh, suck it, Mari. Look at that. Uh, yeah, she was uh, ballet was like her. Main she discipline. Can, she started the, the the ballet background. Maybe after this whole COVID thing, uh, I look forward to your your co-op dance number. Tap was actually my like main discipline, which is funny because like no one really does tap anymore. Like back in the day of like bringing the noise, bringing the funk, and like Savion Glover and like River Dance. Like when that was really popular, that's when I was mm -hmm. tapping because everybody wanted to be a tapper. Um, so yeah, I was. A, feet. It's impressive. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was a national champion tap dancer three times. And uh, yeah, I don't think a lot of people you. know that so about the me. Internet... I think they just know that I danced, but they, I don't think they knew that I like I just I was really good. <laughs> well, that definitely was a fun fact. I didn't see it coming. The internet didn't know about it, and it was fun. We're doing it. Do we're one down, four to go. The bar was really high, though. I I thought we were gonna start kind of low. You started with ju uh, with, with with crowns and royalty, so yeah. I don't know how you're gonna. Top I know that. it's it's all downhill from here. Oh, we're going there. All right, now time for the. Uh, uh... <laughs> Okay, so this one is funny and sad and also funny. Um, okay, so I've a roller coaster of emotions. I've only applied for two like normal jobs in my life because my life is weird and I get paid to be an actor and pretend to be other people and I do lots of weird things um, in my career. But I'd say like a normal job, I worked at GameStop for you did. like a couple months before I got bored and then I pieced out. But yeah, oh yeah. Like I was I, there alphabetizing the DS game. I, I, I too were dead at GameStop. I, you, I think it's really funny. Yeah, I like to see who from the industry actually worked at GameStop because it was either like people think that I was going to get their, their way into the industry or, you know, it was a job that they weren't going to hate working on while they kind of waited for everything else to happen. Dude, that is the trenches for a video game fan. Like you are in it. <laughs> it was... A unique experience. Now, you said that you left uh, willingly, though. You did not get fired from GameStop. No, I did not. I was actually, I was a very good employee. So I what happened you. is I had left Hollywood after all that ended, and I just needed to experience some normal life. I had had a couple heartbreaks in Hollywood, a couple like big movie roles that I booked and then were like taken away from me for a bigger star. And when you're 18, that's like, that hits oh, you really yeah. hard because you're a teenager and you're trying to like figure you're out still learning. You are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I moved away and I got like a group, a new group of friends and started just experiencing like normal life. And I got really, really into writing. And I think that's kind of, that's when I started writing books and that type of stuff. Um, I have a couple of books that I haven't published. I mean, I feel like everybody has huge, you know, every creative has huge writing documents on their computer that are never going to see the light of day. <laughs> and that's the time yeah. period where all of mine developed. And uh, I... Fine-tuning the art. Yes, I was really into video games. I mean, that was kind of right at the beginning when I wanted to get into journalism. I was never a video game journalist. I just wrote like humorous <laughs> articles about video games and talked about them. Um, but uh, I, w I had a lot of downtime because all the college I was doing was online. And I'm like, mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna get a job at GameStop because it was walking distance from my apartment at the time. And I'm like, it's gonna be so cool. I can be around video games. I can have a normal job. I can see what it's like. It's gonna be so great. And I bet I'm gonna get great stories that I can then write about. It's gonna be awesome. I don't know if awesome was the word. <laughs> It was mostly just trying to sell people magazine subscriptions uh -huh. and telling uh -huh. them that they can't get any money for Madden 01. <laughs> uh, but you said that you applied for two normal jobs. What was the yes. second? Yes. So uh, the other job? one was in Burbank. So again, like I feel like I have this great resume, like you know, I was on TV for all these years. Like look at all this cool stuff I've done. And I had moved to Burbank, back to Burbank, California, and I was like, I need a no I need a normal job to help pay my rent. This is gonna be great. So there's a store in Burbank called, I think it's called Halloween Town. So I was like obsessed with the store and I'm like, I'm gonna get a job there. Of course they're gonna hire me because I'm amazing. <laughs> and like, of course, like on my application. I love your confidence. Yeah, like on my application, it's like former employers. I'm like Disney, Nickelodeon, you know, like I'm putting all this stuff. They did not even call me for an interview. <laughs> they wanted nothing to do with it. I think that just, that is proof that people don't read resumes. I think that is literal proof that people don't read. Or maybe they thought I was lying or oh, they definitely that's didn't want to work with me. Yeah. This might have been, it, not, it wasn't before Google, but I don't think it was like as accessible right. on our phones back at that particular time. Yeah. So the joke around here is that I wasn't Halloween Town material. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't good enough so for, for Halloween Town. <laughs> funny. <laughs> you worked at GameStop and, yes. and then you could not get a job at Halloween Town. Uh, you just, your experience did not cut it. That was... You're right, that was fun, a little sad, and then fun again. And I worked there during the release of the Wii. So I had to constantly oh. tell people, no, we don't like, no, have any Wiis. Okay, we're at a good start. Oh, I'm GameStop. having a good time here. Uh, those are two fun facts down. There are three to go. Let's get number three. All right, number three. Lisa Foyles. Um, in my early 20s, I actually um, got my motorcycle endorsement and I had a Suzuki Bandit 600 sport bike for a couple years that I rode around Portland, Oregon, so. You were endorsed by them. Well, so, okay, like, so that's what's hard. Endorsement sounds like you're sponsored, but that uh -huh. that's actually just, it actually just means that you've passed the test and then they've put an endorsement on your license that says you're allowed to drive motorcycles. Do you, do you still ride a sport bike? I do not. Now I think I would be um, terrified to ride mm -hmm. it in the city and now that I have kids I'm not as reckless as right? I used to be. <laughs> but uh, in Portland there were a lot of you know a lot of roads that you barely had any traffic and you can just go on little road trips and just that's be fun. by yourself. Yeah, that's, that is me. definitely the area for it. Were you living in Portland at the I time? I was, yeah. When you were tra doing like the motorcycle stuff, did you ever have like any like uh, near accident moments where it's like, woo, too fast? Yeah, the stupidest thing I ever did is I cranked it up to like 120 on a straight stretch in the rain. Like, what are you doing? Like, it's Man. really slick. You lived. What are you doing? Not that you almost ended, but you lived, but I it's guess. It's so fun. I mean, you're like hunched over and you're, you're just you know, like, yeah, you're, you're in that moment in your life where you're, you know, you feel in invincible. You want to have that movie moment of like, this is what that feels like. I get it. Yeah. I know. I think every teenager does something stupid. Maybe not 120 miles per hour on a motorcycle in the rain. You're a badass. Shouldn't have done uh, That's it. what I'm hearing from this done. story. Uh, yeah, we, we don't recommend it to anyone no, watching. No, please don't do it. Don't do it. You're gonna try anyways, and that's not good, but you know, don't do it. Yeah. Uh, there we go, so we are halfway through our fun facts. We found out that you are a badass who can't get a job at Halloween Town, and uh, um, oh shoot, what was the first one? I had uh, all my trophies one. and my crowns. Oh, that's right, and your royalty. Uh, yes. You are a, a badass royalty who couldn't get a job at Halloween Town, and and now we are we are going to uh, our our commercial break of this episode. We're at the halfway point, so we have to. Uh, 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 get a word from our sponsors here. So, um. And we're back. Uh, welcome back to uh, Five Fun Facts. Uh, uh, that was a word from our sponsors. If uh, if lights start to turn out around here, it's because we didn't have any. <laughs> All right. Before we get to the top two uh, uh, fun facts about Lisa Foyles, I actually have a little mini fun fact uh, uh, for you about me. Dude, hit me. Uh, because... You, you've got the big all that sign in the background that, that is a, a big part of your career thus far. Yes. Uh, what year did you start? <sighs> Why do you ask me things about my own life that I should know, but I don't know? <laughs> uh, um, I want to say it was like 2001 to 2004 or something like that. Is when I was... 
Does that sound right? Uh, yeah, that does sound about okay. right. Uh, because I think you and I auditioned for all that at the same time. No! I don't think we were at the same location, but I auditioned for the 2001-2002 season. Oh my gosh, you uh, did? I made it to like the the second stage and it just uh it, it kind of fell apart from there. Then it fell apart. Fell apart. I, I'm not going to say we're, we're almost uh, we could have been on the same season of all that. We had our own destinies. Yeah, that's awesome. It's my funny story is that um I actually so all that was like my favorite show growing up and I auditioned for season 6 for a tiny little guest spot. Mm -hmm. and I didn't even get a call back. And I was <laughs> devastated, because I'm like, this was my one shot to be on my favorite show. I can't believe I blew it. And I cried and, and cried and cried, and then a year later, I auditioned for, yeah, the, the Life lessons with Lisa Foils. Just in case if you think that the road you're on isn't gonna take you to where you wanna go, give it some time. It might actually just take you there in a different route. Yeah. And now, uh, Lisa Foils, number two of your Okay, I, I so did this fist because I was holding coffee and I was yeah, a little scared. Yeah, you don't want to punch it's too hard that you spill the coffee. That's rule number two in life: don't don't punch, don't punch with do coffee. That. No, nobody does that. Yeah. Okay, so this <laughs> this does not start out fun, but it okay. like I said, this is my inspirational one. Okay, it's a roller coaster. I like so, it. So you know how it's fun to like share scars, be like compare scars, basically. Mm -hmm. So I have a scar on my right hip that I think is about this big, like on the front, like going toward around to the side. From the um, motorcycle? Not from the motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my mom. Uh, because when I was seven years old, I got a staph infection in my hip. And it is still a mystery. Like, the doctors have no idea what happened. Um, but I was rushed to the hospital, and then I was in the hospital for three weeks. And I went underwent, like, three different surgeries. And um, yeah, it was what? like a really intense time. Is Saruman's staff? He does some nasty magic. Yeah, I mean, what a jerk, right? I mean, I'm seven. Like, come on, buddy. <laughs> Go pick on Gandalf for a while. Um, so they basically told my parents that like I was I was never going to walk again. They were like, she's Yee. done walking. Like this is, staff already is like one of the worst, most painful things. Mm -hmm. And having like the biggest joint in your body is like, no and bueno. And a seven year old too. Right. And uh, so they told me I was never going to walk again. And it was this whole big thing. And uh, after getting out of the hospital, I forget the exact timeline, but it was like less than six months. It was just a couple months later. I was back on stage winning high score overall at another dance competition. Winning another crown. But I remember I had to still have like an IV and I had to have this like fanny pack full of like medicine. It was like I said, it was so long ago. I barely remember it. But... <clears throat> My mom had to like hold my IV tubes as I was practicing in the dance studio. So I would like wow. go to the dance, dance studio and she would like follow me around as I'm doing my routine holding my IV <laughs> so that Your I could Your life is so fascinating. It's weird, right? I it's love weird. it. It is so inspirational. I, I love it. So what is what is your your inspirational like tagline there for for someone watching? You will walk again. Don't listen to those damn doctors. <laughs> Thumbs up, everybody! All right. For Walk and Wall! <laughs> there you go. Can you swear there on inspirational you posters? Uh, uh, and 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 what um what animal is looking super cute on this poster? It's like a it's like a baby falcon who's like wait no they they don't walk they fly it's like a baby deer <laughs> it's like a baby deer who has like one bum leg and it's like kind of like. You know, all, like all right, so uh, editor like Paco, let's up. put together that inspirational poster. I love where we're at. Uh, minus the whole thing about being a traumatized seven-year-old, but you, you snap back no, out I, of yeah, it. I came through it, you know? We have gone on an amazing journey with Lisa Foyles today, uh, from finding uh, from learning more about her book to finding out that she's royalty. She's a badass on a motorcycle who does walk again, spoiler alert. But guess what? All of these fun facts have just been, oh, yeah, good facts, because the number one fun fact is the fun fact to end all fun facts. Our fifth fun fact, number one at the top of the fun fact mountain. This one really just defines my entire life. Um, so I one time hid a pet ferret from my grandmother, who I was living with, for about a month. <laughs> okay, is this a real life story or is this, this is like a, a sketch real, that didn't make it to a, all that? Because I like that the, the hidden ferret sketch is great. So my cousin-in-law, Cassie, we were... 
I was living with my cousins out at Lake Coeur d'Alene. If anybody knows what that is, it's a beautiful lake in Northern Idaho where my family's always had a cabin. So I worked at a marina store serving ice cream to tourists and pumping okay. gas for boats. So like boats would pump and I'm like, what is this weird fantastical place? I don't believe any of this story. It's amazing. Five like fun Coeur facts, is miss totally facts. Gorgeous. Yeah. So I lived in the basement of my grandma's cabin who I, bless her heart, like God rest her soul. I love her so much. She was like feisty and small and amazing and I loved her. And uh, so I lived with her for one summer, worked at the marina. And uh, one day Cassie and I were like, let's drive to the, to the city of Coeur d'Alene, city, still a very small town. And like, <laughs> let's get wild. <laughs> and I guess our version of getting wild was to go to the pet store, <clears throat> fall in love with a baby ferret and be like, we need to buy this right now. <laughs> So Why we, did you write a book about fantastical witches? This part of your life is that story. Hey, it's a, hey, my book's about kids with animals. This was me That's and my true. little animals. So it, it, if you were in your book, would you say your familiar would be a ferret? Yes, absolutely. Um, absolutely. And so we like went back out to the car and we're like, should we really do this? And we're like, <laughs> yes. Like we certainly had that moment. Like like, we said we were going is this wild. Dumb? <laughs> we're doing it. We're doing it. So we went back in and we bought the ferret. We bought the cage. And we bought all this stuff. And it wasn't until we were driving back to the cabin that we were like, oh, we need to ask grandma if it's okay if I keep this ferret in her house. <laughs> and we're like, oh no, there's no way she's gonna say yes. We gotta hide it Probably from her. Not. So I, we, we like, one of us goes in and is like, hey grandma, let's go play some cribbage and like distracts her over here. <laughs> the other one like- I played cribbage with my grandma too. <laughs> like we sneak the ferret downstairs and we're like, come on, come on, lock the door, lock the door. So we like set up the cage in the closet. Put me in the closet. And you can easily like shut the closet door like oh, <laughs> over it. So it, Ferret has plenty of air and everything's fine. Yeah, but yeah, like, fine. you know, Big you clump. hear the clomp, clomp, clomp of grandma coming down the stairs. You're like, hide the ferret. <laughs> Every, everything's normal here, grandma. All good. Definitely no ferrets. Go it's back It's like that upstairs. scene in E.T. <laughs> Thankfully, my grandma liked to drink vodka. A lot, Good so grandma. I think that Good just made grandma. her like, I don't care what's going on. <laughs> well, okay, now the question everyone's wondering is, it was only for a month. Yeah. How'd you get caught? Um, my uncle came to visit. So the thing about having Who a cabin. Who was not drunk on vodka. <laughs> not, did not, well, maybe other things. Uh, um, so he came to visit the cabin, as many of our my aunts and uncles did, because it's like a vacation home, you know? You like come out to the lake, yeah. you're like, let's party for a while. So he came down. Noticed we were being particularly suspicious with like hiding the closet door and he's like what you got ladies and you could hear the like <laughs> and, Like the ferret were like, uh. and like squeak, 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 squeak. <laughs> Cough. <laughs> So we opened the the Dress or the closet doors and thankfully like my uncle Stan is super awesome He was like a hippie in the 60s and like he's <laughs> Super understanding and like doesn't really care. So he thought it was awesome. We took it upstairs My grandma's just like what is that rat doing in my house? But then again, she had a little more vodka and she was cool with it That's and then, the, see the timing was everything there. It was yeah, it worked out perfectly and uh, Yeah, that was uh, my little my little ferret story <laughs> So look at the roadmap of five fun facts with Lisa really? Moyle, uh, Foyles. Lisa, Lisa Moyles. Lisa no, Moyles. That's uh, someone else. Uh, yeah, for, uh, the roadmap of, of Lisa Foyles' five fun facts. You are a uh, motorcycle badass, uh, can't get a job at Halloween Town, yet good enough for GameStop. You know, uh, smuggling, uh, that's what I understood, smuggling uh, ferrets. Uh, and and what, what, what else did I miss? Uh, oh, yeah, you couldn't walk and then you walked couldn't again. Walk How do we start? Again. Go over that one. And uh, you. And finally, the crown. The royalty that is Lisa Foyles here today on the Jovenshire channel, uh, giving us five things about the internet that you didn't know already. So get ready, get your keyboards out, update those Wikipedia pages because you just learned five fun facts about Lisa Foyles. Uh, thank you so much, Lisa, for Aww, hanging out with me today. And thank you and for again, me. you've got your your book out. We've got a link down below to it. Um, you can see her in old episodes of of all that. I'm sure are out there somewhere on the internet to stream. Uh, and, uh, you know, actually, I saw this, uh, you were on one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Uh, you were on an episode of Leverage, yes. I believe. Yeah, I actually, um, I booked that while I was living in Portland. I didn't know that what, any, that like, TV shows filmed in Portland. And mm -hmm. then, uh, yeah, I just got, like, I got wind that it was 
holding auditions. Yeah, like if any of you guys have not seen Leverage, I think it might be on Netflix in some countries. Uh, one of my favorite shows. TNT does not get enough love for the uh, the awesome shows that they put out over time. Yeah. So go watch Leverage. Uh, find the episode of Lisa Foyle's screenshot and send it to all of us. Yeah, this, this cast it. was so sweet. It was such a fun shoot. And uh, yeah, it's cool that I got to do that in my hometown up in Portland. Usually everything films in LA, but that was a nice little surprise that that came through town. Yeah, and uh, go ahead, let us know on the, uh, where on the internet we can find you and all the stuff that you're doing right now. I'm just Lisa Foyles across the board, except for Facebook, I'm Lisa Foyles official. Um, Cause some like nurse named Lisa Foyles like took my URL. How dare she owner. live, <laughs> save lives and take your name. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you can find me there and my books on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and um, Audible and recorded books and you can get a signed one um, through Premier Collectibles. And uh, yeah, it would really mean a lot to me if you picked up a copy of my book or shared it with a young reader in your life. You know, it's been really hard to promote it with the whole pandemic. So i um, just trying to use social media to get the word out there. It's a total dream come true that I actually it get sounds to publish just so it. Like, so. It just sounds so cute and fun that I want to live in the world. You can write me into the second book. I'll I will, understand. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, uh, thank you. I think that's it for all of us here. So remember, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button if you uh, like this video. Because if you did, I guarantee you're going to like the other stuff that we do here on the channel. Uh, go follow Lisa Foyles. Until the next time, we'll see you later. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you need some more Jovenshire in your life, we have two videos there on the right. And don't forget to subscribe because if you like this video, I guarantee you're going to like the other stuff that we do here. And if you get a chance, go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram because we create a lot of content there that doesn't always make it to YouTube. Go check it out.